Andy Perth, good morning to you. How are you getting on? Yeah, good. Good morning, men. How's things? Yeah, we're looking forward to this game against England. Um, and then looking at the English press as they list out the glittering array of talent they have. Uh, you're like, wow, this is actually a really good England team. Um, and they're a very attacking team. So I'm interested to see how we go about taking the game to them. I, I want to start maybe by, by talking about McGoldrick, because we talked before about how important McGoldrick was going to be to Ireland into the future. And then after the... Um, when he was speaking on Off the Ball, um, Stephen Kenny had been talking about how he hadn't had yet the opportunity to see Connolly and McGoldrick play together, and now he's not going to get that opportunity, which is kind of unfortunate. What, what are we going to look like without a McGoldrick in the team? Um, I don't... In one sense, believe it or not, it might actually help us, because... McGoldrick drops so deep for his club a team that if we do play one up front, uh, he hasn't given us a real attacking trade. He's not a natural goal scorer, um, or he hasn't scored many goals. So maybe maybe if it is going to be Aaron Connolly up front, uh, he will play more off the shoulder, as they call it, or more likely to be an attacking threat or someone who's going to go in behind, um, which leaves that space again, going back to the, the number 10 position for someone else to fill. Um, I think, I think obviously, McGoldrick's age, he, he wasn't going to be around forever, but there's no doubt it's a blow for Stephen because what Stephen can't do is develop all these young players or, or, or change the squad or bring in a new sort of squad and not get results at the same time. And I think as much as it could be a positive in, in, in a roundabout way by forcing the hand of, um, of the team to play Conley up front, it is a blow and... Uh, because he is a, such a good player. Again, he only, ironically, he scored last week in the Premiership, but he's not a, nat a natural goal scorer, so it may mean a, a slight change. And the change might just be as simple as Conley moving inside into his position and maybe someone like Callum Robson getting a real chance to play games regularly for him and in Conley's position, which, which has been uh, off the left for the last while. But we've seen with Callum Robson, even with West Brom, he can become an attacker as well in the same way as, as Connolly. So maybe maybe it's not the worst thing that's ever happened, ironically, even though it is a blow, because we've got two attackers with pace who can who who like to score goals or get in behind. So it, it can it can it can flip as an advantage over time. That's interesting. Like the clearly defined roles then that the two lads you've talked about would have would give the team a, a more defined shape and then we just have to play to that. We're all kind of obsessed with 9 and 10 and, and, and those terminologies, but um, Robinson wouldn't, in that case, be a 10. He'd be playing on the left of a 3. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think Co we've seen Connolly try to do that. And I think um, that's, we, we've seen Connolly doing that for, for Ireland. He's seen it for the 21. So um, I think Callum... They can they can interact. Callum Robinson can definitely play that position off the lefties. Um, and again, when you've got someone with with pace, the two of them aren't. They're not the quickest players in the world, but definitely people who like to go in behind. I think. Look, when you look at football, um, the more you give a threat to somebody's back four or with England back three, it means you naturally have to drop deeper a little bit. They'll pull their number six in to give them a bit of defence defensive cover and ultimately that's the game of football the game now it's become a game of systems and cat and mouse and um you look at all these top games now even even liverpool and, and chelsea last week was at times played as a 4-4-2 but people have spent hours debating systems and why people why Klopp went before up front it was designed to upset um man city should i say it was designed to upset man city so that that would be the difference for me. I think it could end up being a could end up being a, a, a positive. And also, I think uh, the position of Alan Brown, um, he's someone who sort of has been around the place but hasn't played that much. But I think Alan Brown as a number ten, this win, this in, in particular this window, um, I know he came off the bench in the Slovakia game, but this window could be a big window for for Alan Brown in terms of uh, the Irish people seeing how good he can be because. Ultimately, real a lot of football people in Ireland don't watch a lot of the championship, and he's done brilliantly there for a long time in that sort of number ten position. He is someone who can score goals as well, what we badly need. So uh, the McGoldrick again, going back to McGoldrick, one it could change the formation ever so ever so slightly and give us more of a of an attacking prowess, which creates a little bit more space around midfield. 
it's interesting that position of number 10 we've spoken to you about this before and it's also interesting in the context of how football is going at the moment and uh, I know Hamas Rodriguez did a piece with Rio Ferdinand on his YouTube channel a few months ago where he said the number 10 is not very useful now because people are playing 4-3-3 quite a lot uh, but that creator and advanced midfielder is still an important part of it so how does the modern number 10 operate or the modern advanced creator operate in your view? Um, so I suppose the, the challenge is, and again, the old folkies don't like it. The, you know, when we played football back in, even in early 90s, late 90s, it was 4-4-2, and you'd often hear, no matter what level you played at, you'd hear a manager say, uh, if we win enough battles, if we win seven or eight of the battles, we'll win the game. You know, it was that sort of style. It was t two midfielders against two midfielders, but it's completely changed. It's become a game of chess at times. But to answer your question on the number ten, it depends if he's playing against if he's playing against a team who have uh, two sitting midfielders. Um, his job at times will be huge amount of work rate to to stop them controlling the game and that system. If it's against one sitting midfielder, his job is uh, yes to stop that six from playing, but also to create things. And um, when you look at natural number tens in the Ireland squad, we've, we we I think Jack Bourne is one that can open doors as well. And he's someone that may get an opportunity in this window again. But it's probably a bit early for someone like Jack Bourne because it's okay doing it, as I said before, against Sligo or Dundalk away or Finn Harps. It's doing it in Wembley, for example, in the next game. So it's completely different. And his, I think his time will come. He needs an opportunity. But um, ultimately, we probably need a, an Alan Brown type because, again, he's not... Alan Brown isn't a... The Wes Houlihan type, he's someone who will get around, he'll, he'll, he'll probably cover, at the number 10 has to cover the biggest distance on the pitch in terms of sprints for, for your team because the role is that important to stop the opposition playing. Uh, but at the same time, you only become a really good team if that 10 can either score goals or, or, or create chances. So um, it, it is an interesting one. It would be interesting to see where that falls. That position has to fall on someone. Otherwise, we have to go back to uh, a change of, of system in midfield. And But I don't think we're good enough to play with, with one sitting midfielder and two ahead. I think we've seen over the last little while Ireland are better because of the, the type of midfielders we have with two two deeper midfielders. And even um, Conor Hurahan, who isn't a natural sort of sitter, he, he was excellent in the last couple of games as someone who played a bit deeper. Um, the problem was we used Jeff Hendrick in that number 10 position. And he's not a natural number 10 who's going to create lots of chances for you, but it certainly work really hard for the team. And I think if you ask the players in the Irish squad, forget what the public say at the moment, if you ask the players in the Irish squad what they think of Jeff Hendrick, they'll all say he should be in the team um, because he's that important and it's a lot of unseen work. So um, interesting decisions around the midfield for, for the staff this week. So is it Hendrick Harry and Alan O'Brien for you? Um, at the moment, yes. I, I, I think the problem you have is, and it's the same with so many players in the squad, how, how can you pick Jason Malumbi if he can't even, like he's not playing football? And we're going to have to pick some players who aren't playing football. And a lot of our players are in and out of squads, are nearly there. Even Conley's not, not playing for Brighton. But um, you've got to pick people who are playing. Again, Hurahan is struggling to get into the team uh, at Villa. But you've got to pick people who are at least there, thereabouts. And um, there's just too early for Malumbi. And look, what Stephen needs to be careful of, he doesn't me need me to tell him, is we can he can develop Malumbi all he wants for the next six, 12 months. Um, but he's got to win games of football and he's got to get the very best out of players he has now who are in their team. So really, we need either Malumbi to get into the, the Brighton team or go on loan and start playing football again. So. It is, a, it is a concern, his lack of game time. And so, yeah. sorry, would that be your doubt on the right with Robinson and Connolly up front? And your, is, is it a 4 3 3 the way you've outlined that? Um, again, look, Ireland will do one of two things. It's, it's 4 2 3 1. That's the way I think they played their best. Um, and they're not too open when they play 4 2 3 1. We've seen that in the last couple of games. The first couple of games under Stephen, it was 4 3 3, and we're a little bit open on the when, when the ball comes over. Because McCarthy needs someone beside him, because if Hurahan's going to play deep, he needs someone behind 
etc. The the big question for me is particularly that uh, Ender Stevens is out is is this the opportunity to try three five two? Then the problem with that is you're um, you're going into an England game against a team who are whether Irish people like it or not are one of the best teams in the world. The the way they qualify for major championships, they generally go through without dropping points. Um, they're friendlies, they're normally brilliant. So there's a real debate has to happen about about this Irish team. The one thing I think would frustrate Stephen is it hasn't been a settled team. I think he likes settled teams, but with COVID, with uh, three games in one window, it's not really a great uh, way of building a settled team. And um, we've got to remember, maybe one of the reasons David McGoldrick has retired is getting the injury in the last game uh, or the last camp and then going back to his club and not getting a game for a couple of weeks. That's a challenge because they've three games in, or six game, games in three days and these players aren't playing for the club, a lot of them, or they're in a, nearly there. And the last thing a lot of the players want to do is go home really tired and unable to play in the next fixture. So um, it's it's difficult. It's going to be difficult for, for the staff to get the right balance. Um, so we, we have a lot of big decisions to make and it's, it, it, it is a brave decision to play England this week. There's no doubt about it because uh, I understand the merits of, of not having to travel. Basically, the, the squad will meet in London. They probably hang around in London until the Wales game. And, uh, with COVID already in the camp, as we seen last night, um, this is a diff- this looks like a difficult window for for Ireland, and I think it's a very brave decision to play England. Let's uh, it, there, go on. So sorry, there, there was just some debate, Vinny, at this very start of, of Kenny's reign about uh, Coleman versus Doherty, and I know we'll come to this in a moment, but why they're not both in the same team, and I just wonder if the McGoldrick retirement news kind of rubber stamps Kenny's take on all of that, that I have a system and the players have to fit into that because in international football, there can be so many injuries. There can be a random retirement that perhaps not too many people expected. You can't pin your hopes too much on the availability of players all the time in international football. And more so than at club level, your system is paramount and it is so important and it has to be somewhat immovable. It, like, Is that hammered home a little bit after the last couple of weeks? Um Unfortunately, you won't like this, own, but I think the debate of of um, Doherty and Coleman has to happen again in the same team. Um, I don't think the I don't think the retirement of one or two players would necessarily always change the system. It is if they're very important players, like for for example, if it happened to a team like Wales who lost Gareth Bale, they would definitely have to change the team. We don't because we don't have that superstar in our squad. I think we we can be flexible w- with our with our system. If we if we were picking systems just solely on the players we have at the moment, you would argue that we probably should be playing with a back three because most of our players are playing that in terms of uh, club level, particularly from a defensive point of view. But um, I, I I think maybe maybe losing Ender Stevens is probably taking the opportunity away of playing Coleman with 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 Matt Doherty ahead of him. I think we might have seen that in this window. Um, I think it's something we, I think something that's, that Stephen would probably look at, albeit I think Doherty has improved under Mourinho already from a defensive point of view. I would say that's probably his his big challenge or his big area of improvement from. Um, but he, we may end up having to play Doherty as the left full for this these games, um, because we don't have a left. Believe it or not, we don't have a left footed. Defender in the in the uh, squad at all. I think it's a big blow not having someone like Derek Williams from Blackburn in the squad. He would have um, he he's someone that that can be a really good player for Ireland if anything was to happen to Ender Stevens. So it's 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 a big dilemma. I, I would I suggest that we could even see someone like James McLean play left back and Coleman and Doherty in the same team. And um, listen, can you imagine? The English press, if James McLean was to score in Wembley against England, and maybe <laughs> over celebrate a little bit. Uh, it's something I'd love to see. The old romantic Irish man in me would love to see it, but we may see something like that. Um, we may see wing backs, particularly in the England game, we may see a small bit of experimental play, but at the same time, they won't want to be beaten heavy because it's a really difficult tie. So, um, 
I, I, I was looking at it last night and I was trying to pick the team and it's very, very difficult to pick the team for this window and or for this England game because uh, let me be really clear. I think this is a very important point and something that Irish fans should be clear about. I don't think you can play a lot of these players for three games in six days. And then which game is least important? Is it the England game the least important one? Because... Um, we, we could do a, a competitive win against a Wales or a Bulgaria. So, it's an interesting, uh, interesting decisions to be made for for the Irish team. And then on top of that, you tell someone like James McLean or say even Shane Duffy, you know, we're not going to play in the three games. So we play in against Wales and Bulgaria, and we can sit out against England. They'd be devastated. So. It's really interesting. Um, it's very difficult to pick a team and um, ahead of this game, so I presume it's the same way for the staff. Are you worried about what England might do to us, given the unbelievable attacking talent they have at the moment? Yeah, you you have to be worried. It'd be wrong not to be. Um, but obviously, look, Stephen Kenny is a very brave, brave coach. He believes in, in attacking. He believes in doing things the right way. Um, people say he's... You, like if if they were lose heavy, would he be under pressure? It obviously hasn't entered his mind in any way, shape, or form. He's decided that this is the best game for the group. Uh, the fact that they don't have to travel, the fact that there's no sort of real sort of COVID restrictions, as in the players just drive down to London. Um, he he's obviously made that decision. But England can beat anyone four nil on the day and five nil on the day, and that wouldn't be good going into a Wales uh, a Wales game away. So. That is a fear, um, and they'll have to be, to a point, pragmatic in the game. They won't be able to be all-out attack. But it's it's Ireland against England, and um, so many of our players, that would mean so much to uh, would give them a huge boost. And um, could you imagine the feeling in that dressing room if they did beat England in Wembley? Um, I think it could be the kickstart of something, something special, because there's no doubt Ireland have to create a sort of team a club team feeling about their about their squad because we don't have all these superstars that you see in other nations and this could be the start of it and and that's why it's a brave decision but it's one I'd make myself because the rewards for a positive result in Wembley will be huge for the squad going forward. Vinny, good stuff. Thanks a million for joining us this morning. Cheers. Cheers, Dad. Thank you. It's Vinny Perth giving us some thoughts there on Ireland England tomorrow night at Wembley. It's eight thirty six. You can get in touch with us by WhatsApp 87 180 or you can tell us uh, where you're watching or listening around the world on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash off the ball. We're streaming live there and we're streaming live on the OTV Sports app as well. Let's hear about Paul McGinley talking about Roy McElroy and the latest episode of Golf Weekly. Have a look.